Let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Blessed Father, we are indeed privileged tonight to be here in this great city of South Bend. And a greater privilege than that is to be assembled with these people tonight, Thank you, Jesus. the purchase of thy blood. And we would ask you to visit us with a great visitation of thy presence and make us all God conscious tonight that you are ever near. Bless the pastor of this church and the workers, the co-workers, the visitors, and all that's assembled tonight. May the sick be healed, and may the, the backslider find his way back home again tonight. May the unsaved become saved. Get glory to thyself, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May be seated. About 23 years ago, I was visiting in your, your neighboring city of Mishawaka for my first time to ever have any contact with Pentecostal people. And it was over at certain tabernacle I was coming down from, from up at Dwarjack, Michigan, I think which is near, with an old friend of mine where I'd been fishing. And I passed by and saw this great rally, and I stopped in. And many of you have read my life stories, uh, how that uh, I was just a young Baptist minister at that time, and first time I'd ever been in a Pentecostal meeting to hear them clapping their hands and running all over the floor, and I thought, oh my, what church matters? Come to find out, I was one of them and didn't know it. So I just sit there just like a glove to a hand. And it was in that place there where the colored boy, when he was asking about me, I was next to the youngest minister in the whole conference, just gathered with him a night. And the colored boy said, they kept asking where I was, and I had a little T-shirt on, a little seersucker pair of trousers. That was during the time of the Depression, you know. And no one knew me to be a minister, so I was just sitting real quiet. And the colored boy said, do you know who he is? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, well, go get him. I said, look, I said, I'm him, but I said, don't, don't say that, see. He said, here he is, right here. <laughs> I never will forget my text. I preached on the subject, and he lifted up his eyes in hell, the rich man. And I said, the reason he cried, because there was, there was no God there, so he cried. And I said, there was no children there, so he cried. There's no preacher there, so he cried. Then I cried. <laughs> so I just got all wound up in the spirit, and that's when I found out that I was one of them. I'm happy tonight to be here. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was sitting in a beautiful restaurant, or not a restaurant, it was the uh, Marine Gardens in Chicago, having breakfast. And I had the privilege of sitting by your honorable pastor, and they introduced me to him, and, which I'd seen him before. And um, we got to talking, and he gave me an invitation to come over with saying that Brother Moore, my private secretary, had um, told him that someday that if he would come down to his place, we'd come up here. So Brother Moore had never fulfilled his agreement with Brother Summerall. I said, well, I owe you a visit then. And I said, it's been so, so many places and books are heavy that would just about three nights be all right? He said, anything would be all right. So here we are. Hallelujah. I, I want to say one thing, that not because he's sitting here, but I'm certainly happy to be here and can understand why a spirit like this would exist in a place. I have spoke about him to where I was going with many people, but I want to say this to your pastor, that we're getting a little rosebud now than a wreath when he's gone. I have got my first person to hear say one thing against Brother Summerall, that the honesty and uh, such a wonderful man, I know he's a... Reveal Fisher, because they heard him that morning. The people are all gathering tomorrow afternoon, my folks around here, to hear him speak in these afternoon meetings. And I'm sure you'll enjoy being here and hearing him. And now we are here to try to put in our little ministry with your ministry together to bring glory to God. And uh, I, uh, the Lord has called me years ago to pray for his sick children, and that I reverently try to do. And I do not claim to be a healer now, if anyone can hear that. I'm not a healer. I don't claim to heal people. I, frankly, I don't believe there's anyone can heal people because 
That's God's job, and he's already did that. See? By his stripes we were healed when his son at Calvary was wounded for our transgressions, and with his stripes we were healed, a past tense. And so many times people speak of divine healing. There is no healing but divine healing. That's the only healing there is. No other healing but divine healing. Never did medicine ever cure any case. Never did an operation ever cure. See, operation is an aid, and medicine is an aid, which we think they're fine, and we thank God for every aid that we have. But God's the healer. See? Psalms 103, 3, said, I'm the Lord who heals all thy diseases. So we know we have to agree with the Word. If the Word's out in one place, and it's out everywhere. It's perfectly in harmony all the way through. I just believe the Word. That, that's, God, that's God's program. I do not want anything more than the Bible teaches, but I want all that it does teach. I want, I want it all. So it's God's Word. It must come. Now, I know that God can do things that's not written in His Word. He's God. He can do anything He desires to do. But as long as I know it's coming out of the Word, it just gives me a good assurance that everything's all right. I, I like that real well. Now we're asking the Lord tonight to bless us. And now, just one more word on divine healing. Now, I never come to take the place of your doctor, see. No, I come to do this. I come to pray for God's child, the doctor's patient, my brother and sister. That's, that's what I come for, see. And now, in this, you see so much when you speak of bodily healing that there's the motives and the objectives of people seem to be so confused and wrong many times. Now, you go to the medical doctor, and he'll say, Don't you go over to that surgeon. He's nothing but a, a butcher. He'll just cut you to pieces. He's a sawbone. And then the, the surgeon will say back to the medical, about the medical doctor, You don't need sugar pills. You need an operation. Well, then both of them will say, don't want to do it, that chiropractor. It is nothing but just psychic, your mind. And the chiropractor says the osteopathic, your bones needs adjusting, not your muscles rubbed. And, um, and uh, they're all against the preacher. <laughs> there you are. But what I think, that the motives and the objectives is not right. See, if everything's right, it's, it's a money-making thing. If everything is right, and a man has got his right motive and his right objective to it, I think this, that each of us and all know that operations does good, medicine does good, Bible said so, and, um, and we know chiropractic and osteopathic many times helps people. We know that. You just That's a good aid to help. So what we should do would each one of us join hands and hearts together and march forward to do everything we can for our people to make life a little more pleasant, this journey that we're here in, anyhow. To help one another to do all that we can to benefit and to make life more pleasant for each person that's traveling this journey. It's to this end that I'm here to try to, to do that. To join hands with your doctor, with your chiropractor, with your surgeon, with your pastor, with your neighbor, and and all to try to make life just a little better. And I'm sure by already I feel that I have been blessed to walk in this church here and feel this wonderful welcome spirit and they get to shake hands with these minister brethren as we come in. Just the three nights, just a little get to, together, a little get acquainted. I've always longed to come here. And then maybe later on, the Lord willing, we could do something that maybe in warm weather to put up a big tent here somewhere and have a good revival where it would take a long time. Now, in this, it's, it's pretty hard to come in on a, with a new type of ministry and then try to introduce it in just three nights, when really it should take three nights of introducing before you to get the people to see that it's a word. We believe the word of God is right. Jesus said the scriptures cannot be broken. So then the word is right. And to come and try to uh, start praying for the people right on the first night, it makes it hard. So uh, I just ask this for your, your confidence. And uh, there's very few people that I really come up in contact for laying on of hands. My ministry is not that. Uh, we realize that that's a great ministry, laying on of hands. But ministry of laying on of hands was a Jewish sign. You know, Jeriah said, Come lay your hands on my daughter and she'll live. But the Roman 
Roman centurion said, just speak the word. Hallelujah. Come on, the Gentiles. Said, just say the word. Jesus turned and said, I hadn't found faith like that in Israel. See? Just speak the word. Because what happened? Now bear this in mind. That Roman knew that every sickness and disease was subject to his word. Now if you can realize the same, it's all over. Huh? Hallelujah. When you can realize the same, that every demon, every sickness, every disease, every affliction is subject to the word of God. Just speak the word and my servant will get well. I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. And then in the ministry, as I say that, that he has given me, I'm uneducated and not a, I don't even call myself a preacher, just kind of a spare tire like, you know. At the, and, uh, but in that, to try to bring a ministry to the people that they might love the Lord Jesus. Yeah. God be with you. And may God help you and help us all now to magnify he who we come here to magnify. Yeah. I wish to read out the word of God tonight just for a few moments. And a new meeting and coming in and a little nervous to start with, you know, but uh, I don't know. I had lots of meetings around the world many, many times, but there's something about when you're facing something that you realize that the sacredness of it. God sent it. Satan just looking for a flaw anywhere he can. Now, if the people are not so down on the word, yet they might not speak it out, but you don't have to speak it out. God knows it when it's in your heart. Then you feel that, you see. But now, if you'll just, if you see me do anything, or the Holy Spirit do anything that's not in the scriptures, then let us know about it. See? It must, a few nights ago, over in, Waterloo, and I was thinking one night there the, we had a ministerial breakfast, and there was a rather hard spirit who seemed to not be able to uh, just grasp it. Not it was amongst the Presbyterian, Lutheran, and so forth, and it was a very hard spirit. And I was just broke down with it because the Lord was doing great things, but yet the people had just said. You can pick it up in their mind, you know, what it was, what they were thinking, and that makes it awfully hard. If they're not all with you, one place and one accord, you know, and while I was there on the platform and just having prayer, I thought that a plane was coming over. And I looked around at Dr. Vail here, and um, he thought the woman had uh, reversed the, the air through the pipe organ or something, and it sounded like a thundering coming, somewhere like a thunder roaring coming in the distance. Billy jumped up, and I looked over to Brother Mercer here, which is a tape boy, and he and Brother Gold and my son then get out the prayer cards. He thought he had done something, and he seen me look at him, he said his heart was about to fail, he didn't know what it was. Then all of a sudden, coming right through the building, come like a, a wind, though it wasn't a wind, it was a rumble like a wind, and it just shook down and went out over the audience. You see him turning white as it just waved over the audience, just to repeat like Pentecost, like a rushing mighty wind. So, but it wasn't a wind. It was just like an influence that went out like that. And I noticed the Bible said that it came from heaven a sound as a rushing mighty wind. See, and I began to check because I know the Holy Spirit never misbehaves itself. It's always right. So then I began to check it with the Word. And then I turned over to St. John, the 12th chapter, where our Lord was praying one time. And while he was praying around some of his critics, well, the God of heaven spoke back to his son. And the people who stood by said it thundered. Mm -hmm. Some of them said an angel spoke. Jesus said it didn't come because of me, but because of you, see. So he's always scripturally every time. Now to read his blessed holy word, just to talk to you a few moments and pray for the sick and kind of make this a night of getting together and getting acquainted. And if you'll just put all that you have in it in prayer and backing up, well then we'll, I believe the Lord will heal all the sick and the afflicted and we'll just have a wonderful meeting. In the word of St. John, the 12th chapter and the 21st, a little familiar text. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. And then for a text, the regular campaign theme is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And now, if on this word, I would like to talk to you just a few moments. It's the most unusual thing to think that someone or the world would question the words of the Creator. But it's, it's because it's dominated uh, by unbelief and spirits of enemy, which make them to disbelieve. I don't believe that anyone ever heard that precious name of Jesus for what long to see him. I have had the privilege of preaching in many foreign nations, and great crowds of people come out to hear the gospel, but I've never seen anyone in my life that ever heard of Jesus for what long to see him. There's just something about human beings that seem like the old Missouri slogan, Seeing is believing. And we rely so much upon the sense of sight, as five senses control the body, and the sense of sight is a gate to the soul. It's too bad the Protestant people don't know that. The Catholic caught it long ago. A little statues and monuments and so forth of saints, but the eye, the gate to the soul. And these Greeks had heard something about him, and they came to find out who he was and what he was. And they said, Sir, we would see Jesus. Now, they didn't desire to see his works. They only desired to see Jesus. And then if Hebrews 13, 8, not if, but it is true, the same yesterday, today, and forever, it's seemingly then that we would be able to see him today just like we did then if he's the same. Now, if the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he's got to be the same in principle, the same in power, the same in action, the same in motive and objective. He's got to be the same in every way, only a carpal body. Now, the carpal body was the dwelling place of God. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And this body was put to death at Calvary for an atonement. That is where he was booted for our transgressions. With his stripes, we were healed. And God lifted that body up on the third day alive again, and it sits at his right hand tonight in glory to make intercessions of our, our, uh, for our confession. He is our high priest. He is to make to intercede for us where we make a confession and anything that he did in his all-sufficient sacrifice at Calvary, anything that he did there in the atonement, he bought the price for us to accept it by faith and to ask, and he's before the Father to make intercessions on what we confess that he has done. Now, confess means say the same thing. If the Bible said, By stripes we were healed, to confess it is to confess the same thing. By stripes I was healed. By stripes I am healed. He was wounded for our transgressions with his stripes, we were healed. Now, in that corporal body, as he said that the Holy Spirit was sent back to the earth, to the Spirit of Christ, to dwell in the church. Do you believe that? We are we are Christ's church. How do we get into the church? Not by denomination, not by any other way, but by spiritual baptism. First Corinthians 12, by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Not by water baptism, but by spiritual baptism, we're inducted into the body of Christ by spiritual baptism and become members of his body. St. John 15, he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now, the vine does not bear fruit. The vine only energizes the branch, and the branch bears fruit. And the church is the branch connected into the vine to bear fruit. Hallelujah. You get it? Amen. And the, the branch cannot bear fruit until it's energized by the vine. And whatever life is in the vine, the branch will bear the kind of fruit that is from the life-giving resource it's getting its life from. If it's a pumpkin... It'll bear a pumpkin. If it's a watermelon, it'll bear a watermelon. If it's a, if it's a grape vine, it'll bear grapes. And if the church is in Christ, then it'll bear Christ-like spirit, Christ-like works, Christ-like 
Christ-like faith. It is properly connected, a good, healthy bind, not cut off, hanging down or withering away, but real good, healthy branch connected into the bind this, bring forth the fence of the Spirit. We know that to be true. Now, Jesus said before he left the earth, these works that I do, shall you do also. And he said, a little while and the world will see me no more. Now the world doesn't world order. The world will see me no more, yet ye shall see me. Ye is the believer. The world is the unbeliever. For I, I as a personal pronoun, I'll be with you, how long? To the end of the world. I, Christ, in his church, energizing, bringing the same things that, that he did when he was here on earth as he did in all the ages gone by. He's in his church tonight to do the same thing. It's too bad that we draw lines and barriers and got different little sensations and isms instead of just taking what God said was the truth. That's right. Now, if he has appeared to us in these last days, now remember, when he appeared to the Jew, he, he told his disciples, don't go to any Gentile. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we find out that Jesus himself never manifested himself in the presence or to show himself to, to the Gentiles or sent his church to the Gentiles. But that was to come later. The gospel was to be preached to the Gentiles later. Paul said, after he'd been turned down so many times by the Jews, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Now, in order to find out what he was yesterday, his manifestation to see him, what he is today, then if he's the same today as he was yesterday, his manifestation has to be the same. Now, that may seem just a little unusual from the regular trend of school. But after all, Jesus said these words. The works that I do shall he do also. St. John, I believe it's 14, 7. The works that I do shall he do also. Greater. The right translation is more. You couldn't do any greater. It'd be a greater in quantity, but not in quality. He raised the dead, stopped nature. He just did everything. So it would be more than this because then the Holy Spirit would be working through the church throughout the universe. More of the same works will you do because I go to the Father and I'll come again and be with you, in you. Now there's only one just way. If I say to you Presbyterians tonight, do you, you believe that? Yes, I believe that. Methodist, Pentecostal, and so forth. Each one would believe it. You'd think your churches are doing it. Well, that's right. I believe that also. I wouldn't just uh, credit anyone's faith in God by any denomination because Christ is no respect of person or denomination. He seeks what will worship him. But now, let's the only real true picture we can get out of for the Pentecostal, for the full gospel, Nazarene, Pilgrim, Holiness, Methodist, Baptist, and so forth. If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, let's go back and find out what he was yesterday. Then we'll find out what he'll be forever and what he is today. Find out what he was in the days gone by. Now, if you wish to follow this, you could turn and read tonight. I'll just quote it, and you can check it with me now. Let's go to the book of St. John to start with, just for a little quotation. We find out after that the Holy Spirit had come upon him, God dwelling in him, and Jesus never claimed to be a healer. How many knows that? He certainly did not. Jesus said, the Son can do nothing in himself. It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. And he said, The Son can do nothing in himself. St. John 5, 19. But what the Father, what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. 
Now, is that the truth? Could the Son of God lie? No, sir, that's true. Then Jesus never performed one miracle without God showing him first what to do or he told something wrong in St. John 5, 19. Now, people's always had it in their mind that God's prophets and Christ and them just healed or they took a nurse to heal. No, sir. Never was that granted to human flesh. Take the prophets. Get Elijah on Mount Carmel. When he heard all these things out, he said, Lord, I did this at your command. Oh, God moving, showing his will on what to do. Now, we find out in St. John, the first chapter, after he had received uh, the Holy Spirit into him, which was God in fullness. Now remember, Christ has the Spirit without measure. We have it by measure. The gift that we have in the church tonight is just so little up the side of what his great spirit was. It's just like a spoonful of water out of a great mighty sea. But if you should take a spoonful of water from the sea and take it into the laboratory and examine it, all the chemicals that was in the sea would be represented in that spoonful of water. It would be the same kind of water yet not as much. That's the way the Spirit is in the church. It's the same Spirit, but not in the fullness like He received it. His disciples had been completely defeated on an epileptic case. And just before that, He gave them power to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. And they were totally defeated on an epileptic case. And the Father said, I brought Him to yours. Uh, to your disciples and he said I they could not cure him and he said Lord if thou can have mercy on us Jesus said bring him here if you believe I can and when the spirit saw that great power of God they know that was more than a spoonful as they found in the disciples and the spirit was defeated of course it threw the boy in the hardest city ever had perhaps and wallowed on the ground. But yet, when Jesus said, take him up, give him some food, he's all right. Now, in the first chapter, we find that there was a man who got converted and went and got his friend, his brother, Peter, Andrew. And when Peter came up to the Lord Jesus, Paul told St. John 1, when Peter came to Jesus Jesus not only knew him, but knew who his father was. Jesus said, uh, you are Simon, but you shall be called uh, Peter, which little stone, and said your father's name is Jonas. That's what the scripture says. He knew Peter, knew his name, and knew his father's name. What would that take place tonight? What would the world consider it to be? Just draw an opinion. What would the world think tonight if something like that took place? Just the same as it did then. A telepathy or something. Then there was one by the name of Philip. The next few lines down, he got converted. So he goes over. He was from the same city that the other uh, Peter and um, his brother Andrew was from. And he goes around the mountain and finds a good friend by the name of, um, of Philip and Nathaniel. He found Nathaniel. And Nathaniel, he found him under a tree, perhaps praying, when he came up. And notice, when he got up off of his knees, I can hear Nathaniel say to him, or Philip rather to Nathaniel, Come see who we have found. There's just something about it. If a true conversion has found something real and has been converted to it, he can't keep it to himself. He's got to tell somebody else about it. And he knew this man was very orthodox in his belief, but yet he knew he was an honest man and he wanted to get the message to him. He said, come see who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. 
In other words, the word the prophet spoke of. We found him. Now, could you imagine the shock to this orthodox believer? I can see him as he raises up and brushes the dust from his knees and says, Now, can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? As they would say today, Could there be any good thing amongst them holy rollers? Could there be any good thing come out of such a group as that? And I think Philip gave him the best answer that any man could give. He said, come and see. Hallelujah. That's the most convincing thing. Come and see. And on the road around, I can hear them as they would be talking. I can hear him say, you know what? When Peter came up to him and was talking to him, he told him who he was. Told him what his father's name was. Now, don't be surprised because he might do the same thing to you. I could imagine Nathaniel saying, now, wait a minute. What kind of a deep end have you gone off on? What happened to you? Do you expect me to believe such a thing as that? And Nathaniel, come on, just come see for yourself. So the Lord was standing in the line, perhaps praying for the sick. And here comes Philip up with the Nathaniel, and as soon as the eyes of our Lord fell upon him, he said, Behold an Israelite, and whom there is no guile. Now that was strange, because the Greeks and the Jews, they all dressed alike with robes and beard and sandals. How did he know he was a, a Jew? How did he know he was honest? And it astonished him. And his attitude represented the whole Jewish nation that ever believed. He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? This is our first time ever meeting. Why, you never saw me. You know nothing about me. And how could you know that I was an honest and just man? Jesus said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. How many know that scripture? Certainly it is. That was Jesus yesterday. If he's the same today, he's got to do the same. And, of course, there was unbelievers standing at the time. And we have a record of Mark. And those unbelieving Jews. Now what did Philip say? And Nathaniel wrote it, he said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. They must have been looking for something like that. Thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus said, because I told you that, you believe, then you can see greater things than this. But what did the unbelievers say when these things were done? They were ashamed to speak it right out by the, with their own mouth. But in their heart, they said, he's Beelzebub. He, and Beelzebub was the prince of the devils, like a fortune teller. And anyone knows the fortune telling is of the devil. So he said, he is a Beelzebub. And they didn't say it out loud, but Jesus perceived their thoughts. What the scripture said. What did he say to that group of Jews? The thought that said, Speak that against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven you. But listen close. When the Holy Ghost has come, never wise to do the same thing. One word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. How many knows the scripture says that? It's true. That was the believer, accepted it. His name's immortal tonight. There was the unbeliever who disbelieved it. And you know what happened to them. Now, if that was Jesus' attitude yesterday, today, it'll have to be the same, and forever it'll have to be the same. Now, he didn't, but that they believed. Now, watch, that's exactly how he introduced himself to the Jewish people. And St. John, the fourth chapter now, that's one. Let's go to four just for a moment. He had need to go by Samaria when he was on his road down to Jericho. Jerusalem's on a mountain, Jericho's in a valley. But he went up around Samaria. Why he had need? 
He sent his disciples away to buy vittles. And while they were gone, no doubt a beautiful looking young Samaritan woman came out to get some water. Well, it might have been because she had uh, been out all night or something, but she just come out at that time. And the little panoramic, something like this here, maybe the vines growing around it. Jesus looked at her as he's sitting over against the wall. Have you ever been to the Orient and see how they come to the wall? And he said, woman, bring me a drink. Well, there was segregation in them days between the Jews and Samaritans. And she said, why, that's not customary for a Jew to ask Samaritan such a thing. So we have no dealings with one another. And he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. I'd bring you water that you don't come here to draw. The conversation went on. Now you'll have to take my word for this, if you will. He was contacting your spirit. The father sent him up there. There was a woman, but he didn't know what her trouble was. Then the conversation at length went on about worship of him in the mountain and some at Jerusalem. After a while, he found where her trouble was. And he said, go get your husband and come here. There was her trouble. She said, sir, I don't have any husband. He said, that's right. You've got five. And the one that you have now is not your husband. You said, well... What's the woman? This is not a Jew now. This is a Samaritan. She looked at him. And she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us all things. He said, I'm he that speaks with you. What's what they were looking for? They were looking for that sign that was the sign of the Messiah. Jesus did it before the Jew. The true Jew said, you're the son of God. And now what's the Samaritan woman? She said, well, we're looking for the Messiah to come to do this. But who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks with you. She left the water pot and ran into the city and said, come see a man that told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? If that was Messiah of the son of Messiah yesterday, it would have to be the son of Messiah today. Notice. Not one time was that did before the Gentile. No. This is the Gentile's day. This is the ending of the Gentile dispensation. I'm not much of a dispensationalist, but the Bible speaks of it. That the Gentiles have come to their end. And anyone that don't have to pick up the Bible, just get a newspaper. Turn on your radio. You can see where we're at the end. There's no hopes for us. The church is going home soon and the world's going to dust again. Just exactly what God said would take place. She'll rock her right in the, out of its orbit down there around the sun. She'll burn this time like she went out of the orbit the other time and was destroyed with water. We're at the end and we Gentile peoples walking around all of our degrees and everything and thinking we're somebody and don't know that our days are numbered. And the Messiah, the Son of the living God, has appeared to the Gentile church in the last few years, 30 or 40 years, in the great filling up again of the Holy Spirit, and a revival swept the world around and declared himself in the same measure and power and spirit that he did when he was here on earth. And continually we shake our heads and walk away from it. What's left of judgment? Mercy always calls before judgment. We must have mercy. Give to us first, and if we spill in mercy, there's nothing left but judgment. We bring it on ourselves. That was Messiah yesterday. We see one place where there was a woman that there was a bunch of people after he'd crossed the, the sea through the night, stopped the storms. There was a woman who had a blood issue for several years, and she slipped down by the ocean side, for she said within herself, if I just touch the border of his garment, I'll be made well. Excuse me, I don't mean to yell at you. This, I just, I don't, everyone's controlling it. They um, touch the border of his garment. She really believed. And yet she come to the crowd 
and she touched his garment. And she went back out into the crowd of people, perhaps of this size. And when she went back out into the crowd, Jesus stopped and said, Who touched me? And Peter rebuking him said, Lord, well, everybody's touching you. He said, But I perceive they have got weak. Or the King James said, uh, Virtue, virtue went out of him, which means strength and made him weak. I perceive that I have gotten weak. Virtue has gone from me. He looked around. What was it? The woman had touched God. And he looked until he found her. Standing there, sitting back in the audience, and described to her that her faith had made her well. That Jesus still is tonight. That he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, he's wrong in his words and he's speaking. The words that I do shall you also. He said that about him. Does the New Testament say that? Absolutely. The New Testament says he is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. How did you know you touched him if you didn't turn? How did he work? Through the branches. As he did to the main body, that he works to the branches of his church today. He's got many great gifts in the church that he sets in order to take care of this. Certainly reveals the secrets to us and drops down his, his wisdom to us. Tells us what to do and how to do it. God is not a declaration of some sort of a creed like a Muhammad or a Buddha religion. God is a living God who isn't dead but alive tonight just as alive as he was when he walked Galilee. Right? He lives in his church. And if he doesn't act the same, then you've got the wrong thing. For the Bible said he is the same. And the works that I do shall you also. Now, notice him one more time. He passes down to a book in St. John 5, the next chapter. St. John 5, he passes to a great multitude of people. Right after this miracle had been performed, his garments full of virtue. He walked among Many times more people perhaps is sitting here tonight. People that were called, I guess, fanatics because they believed that God sent an angel. Do you see, God always had some resource for divine healing all the ages through. And he sent an angel to this pool and trouble the water. Many people are considered fanatics. Historians tell us that they stabbed one another trying to get in that water when it was trouble. While people who were critical said, Oh, it's dead in the world, but the wind hits the wall and blows the water back. If you ever walk down into it, a pool of eggs, the old place is still there. And he said, It's just the changing of the wind. But for those who believed, it was an angel. And the Bible declares it to be an angel. So there wasn't wrong after all. But they step in, the first one with faith stepping in would get healed. And they look what the Bible said. They were lame, blind, halt, withered. Such a condition of mass humanity. Suffering. Old mother standing out blind. Oh, somebody help me into the water. How about little children at home? And an old standing with a big water head baby. An old dad standing screaming for help. And Jesus walked right by. And he never said a word to any of them. But he went till he found the man that he was looking for. You notice the Bible? It said, for he knew he had been this way a long time. I do nothing till the Father shows me. He found this man laying on a pallet. Now, I don't know whether you know whether you know what a pallet is or not. I was raised on one. I don't know what a pallet is. Or what for a Kentucky yellow thumb? A pallet. Oh, the Lord of the door. On an old straw pillar. I don't really know what that is or not. An old thick stuff full of straw and you're on a pallet. And this man had been laying on the pallet. He might have had a prostate trouble. He might have had TB. It was retarded. He had it 38 years. It wasn't going to kill him. And he wasn't blind. And he wasn't helpless. He said, well, I'm coming to the water. Somebody beats me there. Somebody can run faster than me. And I've been there all these years. He could walk, he could see, he could talk, he could eat. But it's strange 
that the Son of God walked around every one of those people and went to him. Oh, he was so submissive to the Father that I do nothing in myself. Notice. And as he said to this man, Will thou be no hope? He said, I have no one to help you to the water. He said, Take up your bed and go into your house. The 19th verse he was questioned. And here's the answer of the Son of God to those Jews. Very, very, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, but doeth the Son likewise. Is that right? I can do nothing in myself until the Father shows me the Father worketh and I worketh hitherto. See, Jesus never performed one miracle without God first showing him or he told something wrong. And he couldn't tell nothing wrong because he was God. And therefore, Jesus said these things, The works that I do shall you also. A little while the world sees me no more. Yet you shall see me, for I will be with you. And I, again, is a pronoun, a personal pronoun, that is, be with you. And what place is that even in you? To the end of the world. Then if Christ has come, it's time you say, Brother Adam, through the age, that's right. No way you find it in history. Since the days of the apostles. Wow! This is the last winding up of the message to the Gentiles. We've had the Reformation to Luther and down through the Methodist age and through the Baptist age and into the Pentecostal age and it's about gone now too. So it is the end of the age. And Christ promised to do it. And if he would not do it, then he done something for them that he wouldn't do for us. As I've often said, if this generation of people, if this haughty America, as we are all citizens, if America escapes the judgment of God, he'll have to raise Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to him. That's right. Or burn him up. He's a just God. He's an honest God. And he deals with his children all his life. For they're all creatures of his creation. And here is at the end of the Gentile age. We're at the end. Christ manifested himself just as he did then, proving to be alive. Proving that he hasn't died, but he's alive forevermore to manifest himself through vessels that he can work through. No matter what he do at the platform, if your eyes are blinded to it, if he would raise the dead on this platform, and you didn't have an open heart to it, you wouldn't believe it. You find a way to escape. You say, oh, well, it's like the Jews back there. Oh, it's some sort of a trick or it's a telepathy. Or maybe it's a spiritualist or something like that. That's what they said. Don't you see? God takes his man, but never his spirit. The spirit was up on Elisha, come up on Elisha, on on John the Baptist. And many times those spirits of the Lord is not known until the one who has it is gone. Did you ever think of that? God's just. Let's take this a minute. Took the prophets in the days gone by. They didn't recognize it. And to you people here tonight, recognize. Oh, God opened their eyes of understanding. We're at the end time. They didn't know who John the Baptist was until he was dead and buried. Even the disciples said, Why did the prophets say that first Elisha must come? Jesus said, He's already coming. You didn't know him. Then they know that he spoke of John. They didn't know who Jesus was until he was dead, there and rose again. For they knew who he was. They didn't know who St. Patrick was until he was dead and buried 200 years nearly. You know St. Francis of Assisi and you Catholic people. You didn't know who Joan of Arc was, that little woman that saw Ephesians and was a spiritual woman. The Catholic Church burned her to a stake as a witch. And 200 years later, or years later, they got their, father, they got their priest's body and thrown it in the river to do a penance. And she realized that she was a saint. And the Spirit of the living God is moving over the whole earth today. And people don't know what it is. But God just sends forth His Spirit to declare something. We set starch in hard and let our hearts be indifferent. 
then what's left for us but judgment? Christ is under obligation to his word, but no more than his word. He's obligated to his word. Now, I see the time getting away. Not too long each night. I'd like to ask you something. Upon the basis of God's word, do you realize that Christ made himself known to the Jews by telling Nathaniel where he was before he came to the meeting? Is that right? Made himself known to the Jews many other ways by them touching his garment and so forth. Always in a supernatural. But the supernatural was always with the word. I realize that I'm standing on a platform here right and two real scholars behind me. I know them. Three of them. Now, I guess there's more than that out there. But I want to ask you something. In the Old Testament, they had a way of knowing whether a prophet told the truth or not. Or a dreamer. That is on you in front of them. And we believe that that was the best bit of Aaron. And when the prophet was prophesying, if those conglomerations of those lights work together and make that big glorious light, the prophet was telling the truth. If it didn't work, then the prophet wasn't telling the truth. Now, that priesthood ceased. And the Aaronic priesthood is gone. We have a new priesthood. We have a new year in front of them. That's God's word. If a man tells the truth, the life and the power of God's word will reflect it that it's the truth. And how was it? It was a supernatural reflection. How would a man talking make those, uh, uh, all those different stones send forth that rainbow color? How would it do it? Only when the prophet was prophesying. If he was false, it stayed on him. His words didn't come back. But if he was true, the, it recognized and sent forth a supernatural sign that the people knew that prophet was telling the truth. If God's word prophesies something and God takes the supernatural and proves that it's the truth, it's a urine fundum, people. It's time to receive it and believe God. Now, if he shall come tonight, I don't say that he will. If he comes and performs and lives and acts and does the same thing that we talked about him, will you believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? How many of you just raise your hand and say, Brother Branham, uh -huh. It may puzzle me, but I will know that it's the truth if he does it because the Word says so. Would you do it? Just raise your hand, say <laughs> Wonderful. That's good. Thank you for your attention. Now, now you see where I stand? It's up to God to act next. If it doesn't, then the Word declares something. It's not so, and I've been found a false witness of a false word. But oh, before... Half a million at a time. I've seen him do the same thing. I did it one time in Africa. I saw 30,000 raw heathens break the idols on the ground and receive Christ as Savior. 30,000 one, oh, one, one order call. 30,000 tags. Raw heathens with idols in their hands. But we Americans, we said, well, that could be something wrong. I just wonder if Dr. Philip Jones or whatever, you know, you know, he tells me this is a lot of telepathy. Oh, friend, open your heart. Pray and say, God, you out there in the meeting, say, God, do it at me. Amen. Let me, oh Lord. Let me enjoy your mercies in this last day. Or oh, we're at the end time. The handwriting's on the wall. No, it's in the sky with the Sputnik. <laughs> we, we know that the world really shook up now. And anything can happen. And what did Jesus say to these signs in the heaven and on earth? Jesus said, when the Son of Man reveals himself, he is now. And mercy to the church and rejected to the world for rejecting. Now, let us pray. Lord Jesus, somehow I, I'm looking forward, Lord, to something real tonight. Oh, it would be such a wonderful thing here tonight. If you would just unfold yourself, Lord, to these people and every heart would be open. And let them know, Lord, that your servant, very poor man, very unqualified for the job, but Lord, who is qualified? What mortal being would there be? What creature of time? But Lord, it would not be us, it would be the Holy Spirit to do those things, to manifest. Now, Lord, there are many sitting here tonight in this church.
sitting, sitting here in this pulpit with great men that's preached and great voices has been carried to these microphones. Many that's predicted this hour of this coming. And I pray, Lord, that you will send Jesus tonight with such a great outpouring that there will be not one feeble person left in our midst. Sinners may come to Christ and that cripples may walk and blind see and sick be healed. But tomorrow the whole city will become a great place of testimony that the Son of God might be revealed to them in this day. Grant it, Lord. Bless us together. Shut off all unbelief now. Drive out everything that's contrary. Break the spirit of the enemy. And get glory to thyself. For we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Each day, they, they bring down just an order to get somebody here before me. To get started. Now, he's never saved me. He might not do it tonight. I don't know. Because it's just a gift. And how many believe that gifts and callings are without repentance? Do you believe that? Does the Bible say in the church that there's first apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors? How many know there's five ministry gifts? Certainly there is. An apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, and a pastor. God sets these enemies. There's nine spiritual gifts that goes into the body, such as speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, and wisdom, and, and a different a nine spiritual gifts. First Corinthians 12, that sets the nine gifts they might be on this person tonight, and on that one tomorrow night, and that one the next night, and all over the building. That's just for the local body. But God, by full ordination, we don't want to call the word predestinate, it's a bad word to use before the people, but God, by full ordination, can predestinate. God's wisdom. You believe that? Well, he made everything to be on the earth for a free. You believe that? If he just could tell the end from the beginning. He knows all things. Therefore, he could love Jacob and hate Esau before either one were born. He's not willing that any should perish. No, sir. But he still not a thing that they would perish anyhow. So he could predestinate everything to work to his glory. Now, to get the people here to me, to help here tonight, to see if the prayer line gets started each night, now, we've had, we put out prayer cards. The prayer cards with the little card with a number on it. That's to get the people lined up. First time we, I first started in the ministry, how many remember years ago when I first started, about 10 years ago? Would there be anybody here? Well, look at their hands. All right? The way I view the people there, they take them by the hand. You told it that something spoke to me. To tell, how many know that? How many know that I said he told me that I would even know the secrets of the heart if I'd be sincere? You say people raise your hand if that was told? Now, you might not have never seen it. But listen, there's another move coming now which will be exceed this. Now, I believe it will take place soon. Now, God's church keeps moving up and the enemy comes in like a flood. The Spirit of God raises a standard against it. That's right. Now, there is a stand for you to believe. Now, we used to, we wouldn't, you remember when I, I didn't have any prayer cards. I just said, all, all you want to be prayed for is get up and all my have fist fights and everything else, and knock one another down, push one another away. You couldn't do that. And Brother Bowsworth, he just went home to do it. How many know that that Bowsworth, greatest saint of the day, as I know, he went home to meet Jesus the other day, way in his 80s. He's at home tonight. Before he died, about an hour, he went into a coma and raised up the bed, shook his hands with people he preached to years ago. It's been gone. Just rejoicing and praising God, though I haven't seen it for years. Lies with great men all in my we can make our lives sublime with parties leave behind us, footprints on the sands of time. Right? Yes, let my hand be like that. Now notice, he said to me, he said, Billy Bain, you make it like an arena. So don't do that for all my ministry. I put out prayer cards to make them come here and stand three times before I'd ever pray for them, three meetings for instructions. Well, I said, we'll just do that. Bring up a few hundred cards. I said, we'll go down there. First thing we heard about somebody down there was getting our prayer cards and selling them. So I had to stop that. So then I said, well, I'll just send the pastors, each one. So many prayer cards is cooperating. Well, the first pastors out there threw them. What's the hard thing between the pastors? Couldn't be that. So I said, well, I'll tell you what. We'll just sit down and get out the prayer cards. And then I'll just uh, get somebody. I got my brother to go with me, which I know he wouldn't do that. 
So I sent my brother down. He got out the prayer cards. And he got to the place that found out the way. I was there with maybe from 10, 15, out over 25. If there's cards on the bed, that they just throw it on the floor. I don't want it. I'll never be called. See? Well, anyway, I said, I said, what I'll do, I'll send the prayer cards down and get the whole thing out in one night. And I was calling for that. Then people coming over the second night never had a chance to get the platform. See, that wouldn't work. Always had a time of it. Then I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just give out the prayer cards. Have you had the prayer cards? I said, we'll have some little girl, a little boy sitting on the front seat, to stand up here and start counting. Where he stops counting is she. That's exactly where we'll start from. Strange as it was, Mommy had Junior to stop out of her number. <laughs> that just didn't work. So I didn't know what to do. So one night crossing over to Canada, the Lord gave me a vision and said, go down and get out prayer cards every day. Every day. And then when you, that night, the boys who were giving them out, they could be, both boys who were giving them out of Leo, Gene, or Billy Paul, my boy. And he let them give out the prayer cards. And then they bring the prayer cards down and take them like this before you and mix them all up together. Well, if I don't know this, you want one, you want one, that's just all anybody wants them can have them until they get out. You might get number one, you get 50. And then when I come in, I might start at 50. I might start at 10. I might, see, nobody knows where they're going to start, and I don't either. So we uh, usually get out in the afternoon because the charge, cards are interchangeable and they must stand the the instruction meeting. So we're being instructed on how to receive divine healing before we give them the cards. And then the boys are ready to give out the cards. And then I might start from 5 and run from 5 to 10, and then next night I might start from 95 and come back this way, just anywhere. Whatever comes on my mind when I'm standing here, that's just to all. That's right. Now, the only thing that does is get the people here a few lined up. That has nothing to do with they're going to be healed. Not a thing. It only gets the Spirit moving, gets the doubt out of them. Then the Holy Spirit goes right on out to the meeting, to the people anywhere, where they ever may be. Call them right there just to see to touch his garment and see if he doesn't have it. See? That's the way. See? And anyone who's ever been in my meetings lately knows that there's, there's ten to one here in the audience and called out to watch on the platform. Anybody ever been in my late meetings? Raise your hand if you know that's true. Sure. See? Ten to one. Your prayer card don't have nothing to do with your healing. Your prayer card don't mean one thing. It just means for you to, you're called up here just to, what does it? I don't operate a gift. Your faith does that. See? Jesus, he was the Son of God, but that woman, he didn't know who touched him. He said he didn't. Is that right? What did the woman did? She operated that. See, it's your, it's your faith in a divine gift. Do you believe? It's your approach to it. Do you believe that? What about that woman soldier that put a rag over his eyes and hit him across the head with a stick? Then I prophesy, I tell us who hit you. He never saw any virtue. There wasn't one thing told him. He's in torment tonight, I suppose, for an attitude like that. Look at Martha when she went to get uh, to Jesus, and she comes to him. She said, "He'd want to go after when there's a trouble and Lazarus had died." But did you see? There's the truth. The Father had already told him what to do. He said, "I'm glad I wasn't over there." He said he's dead four days. What the Father had told him. He said he did nothing until the Father told. Him. At the grave, he said, "I think the Father's already heard me, but I just said it for these who stand by." See? He never said he got weak there, did he? No. How much greater was that than it was the woman who touched his garment? But that's when God was using his gift. See? This is when the woman was using his gift. It's just, your, your faith does it. it I, I could no more stop it or no more produce it than nothing. It's your own faith in it. If you don't believe that faith, just look to God. Don't be nervous. Just look to God and say, Lord God, I believe that telling is all my heart to be the truth. And I have need of such and such a thing. Watch what he'll do. That's a great word to say here, isn't it? That's right. But I know who I have believed. I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which has been committed. If God says anything, God keeps his word. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I go on record through the tapes and so forth as that. But I say this, that the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of God will bring it to pass. Remember that. If you take the right mental attitude towards it, the promise, it will bring it to pass. May the Lord grant it. Now... Uh, did you get them out? J1 to 100. We can't line them all up. We can line a few of them up. Who's got J number one? Prayer card with a J number one. A lady right there? Come over here. Number two. Number two. Would you raise your hand? Thank you. Number three. Come right down here this side, if you will. Number four. Is it the gentleman back there? Five. Who has number five? Lady six. 
Just look on your card. You have number six, lady. Uh, the lady coming with the purple dress, number six. Number five. Number six. Does anyone have number six? Would you raise your hand? One, two, three, four, five. Prayer card number six. It may just come. Listen. Here's a lady here in a wheelchair, a little girl. Check her card there and see if, that, if that's uh, number six. J number six. All right? Is it here? Would you raise your hand? So, somebody has maybe... Look at your neighbor. Maybe somebody's breath is in here. You will miss your card. Look at your neighbor's card. How many prayer cards in the building? Raise your hand. Supposed to be 50 or something. All right. How many is in here that definitely have a prayer card and wants God to heal? You raise your hand. Just, uh, all right, don't matter who you are, where you are. See? There you are. See, the reason he's going to be first now. See, he couldn't do it. About 80% of the crowd here is wanting to be prayed for. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Prayer card number six. Look at your neighbor and see if it's a deaf person. See if it's somebody who can't walk. If it is, just get somebody and raise them up and get the usher and come pack them up here. Number six. All right, number seven. You number seven, lady. Number seven, number eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Are you eleven? Two, eleven. Back there, twelve. Twelve, did I see the hand? All right, thirteen. Fourteen. They're just all over the building. You say, well, they just, boys, just give them out to anybody that wants them until they run out. Give a few years, a few there, and everywhere so they want all crowd and rush towards one place. All right, I think we got up to about fifteen or something now there. How many is that, about fifteen, brother? Fifteen. All right, let's start the prayer line and just um, and see if we... Uh... All right. Now, just a moment, we'll see how these come. And now, how many in this person have a prayer card? And say, and say that this person at the end, Lord, I believe you tonight. I'm going to put my faith in you. I know that man standing there. He, he didn't do nothing for me. But if he has explained the truth that you're in your church, he'd be a member of the church just like you are. See? We're brothers and sisters. Just a member of the church. And the Holy Spirit loves every one of us just the same. See? And you say, I'll set my solemn faith in you, Lord, and you have the man to turn around and call to me and tell me what I'm praying about. Tell me what something is like he does in the, like it did in the Bible. Would you raise your hand? You that wants that to happen to you, raise your hand. Just put it way up high and believe it all. No way of knowing it's just everywhere. Or right, just believe now. Just believe. If you get out a prayer card, of course, you won't be called. But if you got a prayer card, we don't know just what will take place. Now, now here, here's the time. I want to say to you all, remember the services tomorrow afternoon. How many here, never was in one of my meetings, let's see your hands, never was in, just a, all right, all right into the overflow over there, all right? As I tell you, I'm not a preacher. As a word, you can handle it like your pastor and these men here, see? But I may not know the book too well, but I know the author real well. That's, that, I know him. Mm -hmm. But now here's for the time what I have said. How many believe that what I've said tonight is the truth? That's the, that's the word. That's the word. Well, thank you. You keep a spirit like that, and you'll see great things in these three nights. You certainly will. Now, how many have ever seen the picture of that angel? Let's see if they took it down in Texas. The boys, have you all got them pictures here with you? See? If I die tonight, the testimony is still right. I'll give it maybe to you tomorrow sometime if I can. See? See, it's a, it's a light. How many know that the children of Israel followed the pillar of fire? Sure they did. How many know that pillar of fire was Christ? The Lord, the angel of the covenant. Sure. Sure. All right. How many know that he was sure on earth? He said, I come from God and go to God. How many know that? How many know that he met Paul on the road to Damascus? He's back to the pillar of fire again and put Paul right now. <laughs> Let me see. All right, see, he's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if that spirit, which I tried to tell the church, when I was a little baby, 18 months old, that's why when I first began to talk, first thing you ever remember is the vision. It's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and never one time did it ever fail. And it can. If it would, it wouldn't be God. But being it is, God, it can fail. See? 
So I stood before 500,000 at one time, the Bombay India, about 200,000 in Africa, heathens and everything, and challenged the Mohammed, take the Koran in the morning and the Bible and say one of them's right and one's wrong. That's the God that made the promise to the Hallelujah. Thank now, you John, see? Listen, brother. The, the psychic word is all right just to speak and preach, and, but listen, it's come to a time. I mean, it's come to a time where the God who raised up Jesus Christ That's manifests right. himself. Right. The God of Elijah still lives. Amen. Certainly he does. Look at those people, and many of these folks have walked with him daily and didn't realize what it was. Those who loved him, feel this and his friend going to Emmaus, they walked all day and talked with him. They didn't know who he was. His resurrection day. Three days before his washing down the cross, he was the same man. How many know that God can shut eyes or open eyes? Certainly he can. Certainly he can. Now, let him open yours tonight. And after he got to Emmaus, no guy could blow him by him. Some of them persuaded him to come in. When he got him in the room and shut the door, and got him closed in, like we are here now, he did something the very way he did it before his death, Bill. Is that right? And they recognized their eyes from open, and they recognized it was him all the time that they'd been talking to him. I pray tonight that our hearts, when we leave here, will be the same way. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the road? May he do tonight just the same things he did before his resurrection to fulfill his word. He don't have to do it to show his power, but he must do it to fulfill his word. That's what he comes. He didn't have to heal to show his power, but he had to heal to fulfill his word. Now, be reverent. This picture has been taken. It's here. If you want it, you get it tonight or tomorrow night, not the next, you see. Now, the boys have to give the tapes and the books and things. Now, we're, this is just simply flat what we get for them. Just, we don't do a lot of no programs to sponsor. I'm not here for money. You know that. <laughs> you heard that. And one thing the critics can't say is about money. Because I've never, never took an offering in my life. And I've been a minister 26 years. Never took an offering in my life. I don't have any television, radio, and so forth to where I have to be sponsored. I can go and preach to people who's got a church that has ten in it, or, 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 or a hundred thousand if the Lord wants me to, you see. So it's just wherever he sends me, I just feel liberty to go. I don't have any programs, nothing to... We got some books, the life story, the boys get the tape here, and then boys sell them just so close. And then the picture, I buy them a set of copyrighted here in Washington, D.C., of a supernatural being that's right under the earth, the only supernatural being that was ever scientifically proven, photographed. They did it in newspapers, but this happened to be the association that did this. And in Germany, they got it coming down when it was anointing, when it was going back. They got it in Switzerland, it's no the world around. And the, the fruit of that spirit bears the life of Jesus Christ. Then it'll have to be the spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, as a man, I'm a man. That's just like the rest of you. But now, if we can submit ourselves to a gift that the Holy Spirit would move, now the next is up to him. So, Father God, from now on, let thy spirit move, anoint hearts to believe, and anoint me, Lord, that I'll see with these eyes that the things that you want these people to know. Work, O eternal God, for thy glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the lady sitting here, I don't know her, or the standing here, I just, she might know this. There is not one person in this building that I know. How many in the prayer line would just raise up their hands that I don't know you and know nothing about you in the prayer line? See? How many out there knows that I don't know you? Let's see your hands. There was some of and my son, Dr. Vail and the brother of McAllister here, and I seen one of my many night friends somewhere a while ago, just a Waterloo meeting, but I forgot what was that while I was speaking. He's here in the building somewhere. A Mennonite brother from was at the meeting last week at Waterloo. I don't know now. He might have went out. He was sitting here somewhere. A Mennonite brother, and um, he's in Pennsylvania, I believe he was. He's been at my home, and we've had fellowship together. He's somewhere in the building, but he's dressed with a Mennonite clergy coat on. And you, if you know, uh, no one knows. So now you look to Christ now and say, Lord, I just believe. I just believe. Just believe it in your heart. Be real reverent. And pray for me, because I'm here to represent your Lord through his word. Now, I just want to talk to the woman. Just a moment. She's the first one here tonight. Now, if the lady is a stranger to me, now, that is, here's a perfect picture of St. John Forward I talked to you about. A man and a woman meets for the first time. The woman, the Samaritan woman. And Jesus talked to her a few moments, so he found where her trouble was. Is that, how many believe that now? 
You just talk to her until we find her trouble. Now, if this spirit will come and find this woman's trouble the same way that he did there, how many will believe it then with all their hearts? I promise I'll be. Now, sir, I'll say this. With my hands up, I don't swear, but by the Bible, I've never seen the woman in my life. I don't know the woman. I've never seen her. And this is our first time meeting lady. She saw me. She was just in the meeting. No, I went through the prayer line with my boy. Went through the prayer line with her boy. Ten years ago in Phoenix, Arizona. You can imagine what I know about her. <laughs> I have never, I've met many, even millions of people since then. I had no one. If it was in a prayer line, I wouldn't know it anyhow. The only way I know what happened. I do not do see Betty Smith, I said, a writer of a, a magazine uh, from uh, out west of Texas, I believe it is, or uh, uh, Oklahoma. Betty Smith, yes. Glad to see you and your wife. And, um, that's, um, I only laid out every know what it said was kept that tape there. We know everything that's been said to people. Watch what it says. If you know what it has been, if I tell this woman she may be sick, she may not be sick. She may be staying here for someone else. She may be here for financial conditions. She may be here for domestic troubles. I don't know. See, I can't tell you. But if I say, just say, maybe you sit and say, yes, sir. I lay her hands on and say, praise the Lord, you're going to get well. Hallelujah. We'll do that. Well, she'll have a right to doubt that. Not well, I know where she would or not. But she should have a chance to question her mind where it was really so. But if the Holy Spirit tells her something that's already been in life, that she knows about it, Something she done a long time ago, or something she done first to come here, or something, let her be the judge whether it's right or not, and you be the same out there. Then you know, if he knows what was, he certainly knows what will be. Is that right? So that brings it. That's the miracle. The woman looks like a big, strong, healthy woman to me. But maybe she may be sick. I couldn't tell you. But whatever it is, if I say, there's a little girl, a few ladies sitting here in a wheelchair. Sure. They're in a wheelchair. They're crippled. Sure. Anyone knows that. That would be no miracle to say that. But what about this woman? She looks strong. What about these women here, these men, or somewhere out there? Look stout and healthy. That is the miracle of it. Now, be real with it. If the old man is stalling, I know it. The drunk around. I'm waiting for him to drunk around. If he doesn't help come to me, I'll just dismiss the audience of prayer or turn it over to the criminal. I'm waiting for him. Only to believe, if you will, sister. Just everybody real with it. Be real reverent. Now, while we just talk to the lady a moment, maybe he will speak. Now, sister, and everyone who's on the microphone, watch now, because it's a vision. You're somewhere else. You don't know how loud you're speaking or how soft you're speaking. So everyone who's an engineer, keep it stepped up when the vision starts, if it does. Now, I think you said it several years ago, you was on the platform in Phoenix, Arizona. That was great days. I remember, I remember, I think 3,000 come through the line one afternoon in Phoenix, Arizona. He's still the same Lord God. He, he's great. He can do all things. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit subject to the Holy Spirit. Be ready. Be sure. To know you, I do not. If you're sick to heal you, I cannot. The only way that I could do, if our Lord Jesus was standing here with this suit of clothes on that he gave me, he could not heal you if you're sick. He could only do something to make it, you know that he's here in answer to his word. So he, being in a, a spirit form, can use his servant's body for the same thing. You believe that, lady? Do you believe that I have told the truth from the Bible? You solemnly believe it. And now you're aware that something's going on. And you know standing here by your brother wouldn't make you feel that way. Because between me and the woman there's that light moving. And a woman is in a serious condition. First thing I see her, she's coming to me through a room. She's rubbing her side. It's a, she's getting from a chair now real easy. She's suffering with rheumatism. That's right. That's, thus saith the Lord. Let her be the judge what was right and not what was said. Was that right, lady, for this up your hand? Now, what it was, I don't know. Let's see if you take that, that's the one that's saying this. Now, whatever it was, you heard that voice, but it wasn't mine. Now, if both of us with our hands up, but we do not know each other, and have never met each other, only she just fell through a prayer line. 
Well, that uh, ten years ago, when maybe it's coming through as fast as you can herd cattle through. See? But look at this. Here it is now, he tells her something, whatever it was, that's on the face. She witnesses it's the truth. Ah, uh, well, it was up to you whether you believed or not. See, it's up to you. <clears throat> but now, more will talk to the woman. Now, that's the same thing the Lord Jesus found the woman's trouble. And that's what, ever what it was, that was truth. She witnessed the truth. And the lady raises her hand, that's truth, is it, lady? And whatever it was, is truth. Now, more you talk to the woman, more will be said. You really realize that, see? Would you always desire this this woman saying it just to talk to her just a little bit? Would you desire that? Or would you rather just pass her through the line? All right? Let's talk to the woman just a moment. Be ready. Now, lady, the only way that I know, you're technically over there, see? All right? The only way I know would be that. Whatever it's on that tape there. Now, you just look again and believe with all your heart. As I'm not reading your mind. No, sir. Now, if the thought comes from the building, I don't believe that. I'm not reading a woman's mind. No, I mean. I'm just contacting her spirit. She's a Christian woman. Her spirit feels welcome. She could be a critic. See? But she's a Christian. A real believer. Now, if the voice can still be heard, yes, I see the woman. She's doing something else. It's a, it's a rheumatism. It's rheumatism in her body. And then I see her at a place where she's changing her underneath clothes. And she's bothered with a, a something in her, it's in her breast. She has a growth in her breast. Cancer. Dark shadow. And the woman is not from this country either. The woman comes from a city that's near a great lake, a big place where there's lots of fruit that grows. And that's the north of Bitten Harbor, Michigan, the woman's from. And her name is Mrs. Mansfield. That's Buck Theophilad. <laughs> Whatever he said, the truth is up on. Now the lady says every word. Certainly. Now, whatever it is, let's pray. You're the church of God now. Whatever her trouble is, let's you, you pray with me for her so she can be the help, whatever she's asked for. Now your prayers is not going to count now for her. Heavenly Father, your children are believing. And now the woman is in need. And we ask that whatever she is designed, may it come to her just now, Lord, and make her, whatever, if she's sick here, if she has other desires, put it to her, Lord. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall repel it. They're believing now. Do you believe with all your heart? As you have believed, you will receive just as you have asked for Are you believing with all your heart now? Yeah. Are you out there? That's a wonderful spirit. Just keep that up and you'll see the glory of God. You ought to be able to say, well, just keep believing in that. Oh, how wonderful now. Now, now he's the boss. Now it is spirit is coming subjective. You know? Now's the time. Oh, how wonderful. Just believe I suppose we're strangers to each other, lady. I'm a stranger to you. You have, you've been at my home. God knows I don't remember you. I've never seen you. As far as I know it, you see, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds come there. I, well, let's see. I don't know what you're here for. I have no idea. You know that. I'm... Is that part. If the Lord will reveal to me what's your trouble, will you accept it? You will. Will your audience believe? Yes. And here's my hand. As far as I know, I've never seen the woman. She says she's been at my home, but my, that's hundreds and hundreds has been there. So well, I will never know who it was. But if the Lord will reveal your request, then you believe it. You want me to touch that handkerchief? 
Now, Hank, it's just not for you. Hallelujah. But it's for some of your loved ones. It's a sister-in-law, and she's in a state hospital, not in this state, but in the state of Ohio. And in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be so. Amen. Right, God bless you. I'll go and see what you've done. I suppose we're strangers to one another, sir. The first time we've ever met. Here's a man that I've never seen in that. I've seen you before. Sir? You've sat in the audience? He's been in a meeting in Chicago and seen me from the platform the first time we've ever together. I have no more idea what, who, or nothing about it, things than anything. I'm withholding some of these things because of the people knowing, you see. They said they've been some places. If the audience would know that I have this being our first time to ever be together, I, I don't know what you're here for, you know that. It takes God to do that. If he will reveal it, would you believe it? Do you believe the Lord could reveal to me 
What's, what's your trouble when you would receive it? Now, how many of you are now believing with all your heart? Now, what is it? This, if he has to keep that word, he keeps every other word he ever said. He has to do it. How much greater is what he's doing now than what he did to heal your condition? He keeps his word. He's bound to his duty, bound to his word. The lady's not here for herself. She's here for someone else. And that person that she's standing here for is not here either. Because that's your mother. If God will tell me what is wrong with your mother that you're praying for, will you believe it? Cancer. Now, if you did something just now that you didn't know any different, but it was wrong doing it, this prayer card that you received, a friend got it for you. That's right. That's not, that's not to be done in the meetings. You didn't know any different because you had to explain it. Someone got it and given it to you. That's not supposed to be. What's matter, Billy? I just slip up on that. All right. But uh, it's all right. You didn't you have seen You haven't done anything wrong. All right, little handkerchief in your hole in your hand. Go lay it on your mother. Put it on your mother. And believe with all your heart. Hallelujah. Let us believe now with all our hearts. You thou canst believe. What do you think sitting like that with it? You believe that God's will that every man come and shake his head down? You believe that God can heal that rest for you and make you well? You believe it too? Raise up your hands if you believe it. All right? Then if you don't believe it, let it be according to your faith. I don't know you. We're strangers to one another. Never met before in life. Excuse me, something else taking place. And they just have to watch it up. What's going to? Yeah. Here it is. Fighting each other. <laughs> You have trouble in your back. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Back trouble. If you believe it with all your heart, it's right. Then it's over. Um, you got trouble trying to hold that? The man was saying that. A while ago when I was speaking, sir, you were trying to believe. Wasn't that right with all your heart? As your faith was coming in, but I couldn't tell what was that. That's it. And this spirit you're trying to hold a woman, the same thing beginning to scream to each other in a black street coming across this way. I knew then what it was. I saw the vision of the woman. I saw a man appear here before me too, and I, I know it was sitting in there, and I know what was that. You believe it all, you know? Got a spine trouble. That was caused by an automobile accident. And you want to go back down to Kokomo and be made well? I do. All right, go back home to Kokomo and be made well. <laughs> The Bible says, if you can believe, do you believe it all your heart? You out there for women who are sitting out there with a car on maybe last year and two. Yes. We do this with you. Amen. Actually, look, you're sitting on this side. Do you believe the Lord Jesus makes you out of here? How many will believe it right now? You can do it over there, right now. Do you believe it? All right. All right, put your hands on one another. There's, there's, there's no need to go any further. Right here, the time for your all you need. Lay your hands on each other and believe it. You're in the prayer line. Well, we just do the same thing coming up. Just lay your hands on one another. Now, here you are. I want every singer, as soon as this prayer is made, to rest up at the altar. The presence of the Lord Jesus is here. The Son of the Living God is here. Yes, that's right. You have the lady's female trouble sitting there. The Lord makes you well, sister dear. Don't worry about it anymore. Certainly. TV. God bless you. It's all over now. You can go and be made well. Right. Just have faith now. Believe. If God is here for us and man hears it out there, does he do just exactly what he did in the Bible time? Then he hears prayer. Let's put our hands on each other now and pray all over the building. 
Dear Heavenly Father, oh, I am so grateful to know that there's still faith moving in the earth. Oh, this great hour, just now when we're expecting some great something to take place, a believing people, they believe because he's told them these things. And he said to Nathaniel, you shall see greater things than this. Grant it now, Lord, may they be conscious that Christ keeps every word and every promise. May the Holy Spirit come powerful upon this audience just now. And if there ever be a shadow of doubt anywhere, Satan, you've lost the battle. You're exposed. The Son of the living God is here. And I hear thee in the name of Jesus depart from here. Let every sickness go, every affliction. I ask the devil or cast him away in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, Satan, and leave these people alone. In the name of Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Stand to your feet. Give him praise. You who took the earth, put your fingers in the earth. Whatever it was, give him praise. God's Spirit moves over the place and heals the God.